Founder fans, Jason here, and today's founder is Richard Dobbs Spate. Now, Richard Dobbs Spate was from North Carolina, but he was orphaned at just eight years old and ended up getting sent to live with extended family back in Ireland. So he spent the better part of his youth in Europe and returned in 1778 as a 20-year-old ready to fight in the Revolutionary War. And he joined, and because of certain connections he had, he was selected as an aide-de-camp to Richard Caswell, who at the time was governor of North Carolina, and which also meant that Caswell was head of the North Carolina militia. Now, Richard Dobbs Bates served with Caswell for a, bit of, well, a little bit more than a year before being elected to the Continental Congress. And he served at the Continental Congress for a while, then eventually came back and was elected to the State Assembly. By 1787, the Constitutional Convention was called, and Richard Dobbs Bate, still just 29 years old, mind you, was sent to the Constitutional Convention, where he helped all through the Constitution. Granted, he was a younger member and didn't speak up that much, was mostly a passive participant, but he did sign the United States Constitution. Then he returned to North Carolina to try and get it passed. Famously, North Carolina was not excited to get the Constitution passed, and well, Richard Dobbs Bate was at the first convention, which did not pass the Constitution, but eventually North Carolina capitulated and decided to accept and ratify the U.S. Constitution. At that point, Richard Dobbs Bate, well, he attempted to become one of its first senators. This did not work out for him, uh, mostly because of his youth, so he decides to run for a backup plan and run for governor. And Richard Dobbs Bate does become governor of North Carolina. He serves in that position for the maximum three-year term limit that he's allotted, uh, and after which he runs for and actually wins a seat in the United States House of Representatives. Now, things get a little bit interesting for Richard Dobbs Spade here because while he's in the House of Representatives, he originally ran as a Federalist. This is a guy who helped write the Constitution. But he ends up siding a little bit more with Thomas Jefferson by the time Jefferson becomes president, and he switches sides, switches parties, and goes from being a Federalist to being a Jeffersonian Democrat. Now, Richard Dobbs Spate did have a rival within North Carolina, a man named John Stanley. And John Stanley, well, he talked a lot of trash about Richard Dobbs Spate. He called him, for lack of a better term, a flip-flopper for changing parties. And, well, this was successful when Stanley tried to run against Spate for a seat in Congress. And Dob, uh, Richard Dobbs Spate loses his seat in Congress to John Stanley. So Dobbs is not really pumped about this, and he decides to take out some revenge, and he calls John Stanley out for a duel because of the public embarrassment he put towards Richard Dobbs Spate. So these two men agree to a duel, and they meet on a dueling ground, and what's interesting about this is down in North Carolina at the time, well, they didn't meet quietly on a hillside. They actually met in public in front of a crowd, and they exchanged fire three times, so six shots went back and forth, and no one was wounded. And the crowd started begging, okay guys, we get it, you've proved your point, everyone shake hands, we're done here. And Richard would not let it go when he said, no, we're going to finish this off, we're going to finish what we started. So they line up for a fourth round of volleys, and what do you know, Richard Dobbs Bate gets hit in the side, he goes down, and he dies later that day, still not yet 40 years old. That's the story of Richard Dobbs Bate. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit like and subscribe for new videos five days a week, including tomorrow. We will be playing trivia as we do every Friday. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with those founders tomorrow.